Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining our first Ladies' Hour online. I'm really excited for this series that we're doing. Uh, for many of you, I know you joined us yesterday for our Gentlemen's Hour, which we will be doing every Tuesday. And today, Wednesday, we're going to be doing our Ladies' Hour. And here we're going to be talking about, well, ladies, women in general, and there will always be something here for everyone to learn. Whether you are single, you are married, you are single again, or perhaps you are a mom that's married, or a uh, single mom. There will be things that you can learn here in this series. Now, I don't know how long this is going to go. Uh, for now, uh, I think it will be safe to say that we will be doing this as long as we are quarantined and on lockdown. Now, whether this will evolve into something um, that will be far longer than, than uh, the quarantine, we'll see how, how this goes. But for now, I just want to welcome everyone that's here. By the way, this is also open to um, gentlemen. You're very welcome to join us. You may learn a thing or two here uh, about, about ladies and maybe what, uh, how you can raise up young ladies in your daughters you know, or even your wife. Um, I have a couple of stories that I'd like to share with you as we go along. But for now, I just want to welcome everyone. And oh, by the way, if you have any comments or questions, write them down here. Okay, just write down your questions here. And if I can answer them uh, sometime, you know, within, within the next day or so, I will be happy to do that. But if the answer requires a, a little lengthier discussion, then I'll go ahead and answer them in my next uh, telecast or whatever you call this. Okay, but uh, I will be happy to answer whatever questions. Here's a little disclaimer, by the way, as we get started in our very first episode. I am not in any way an expert on women. Okay, I just want to clarify that. And so, ladies, if there's anything I say that uh, does not agree with you, you are welcome to voice your disagreements as well. And uh, I will take those into serious consideration. And if I have to correct myself, uh, I will be happy to do that. Okay? I was, uh, you know, unlike, unlike being a boy and then later on a man, I've had experience in that. But I've never experienced being a girl or a woman or a lady for that matter. I have studied and uh, through my own experience in raising up um, a young lady, maybe I have a thing or two to say about this. But uh, the Bible does talk a lot about women and has much to say about the place of a woman, the beauty of a woman, the strength of a woman, whether, um, whether we're talking about an emotional strength or an internal fortitude that oftentimes elude men, you know, so you are unique in so many ways. And um, I also want to say, by the way, because I did get a few comments in the Gentleman's Hour, and so I want to say here as we start that uh, this is not about, um, how do you say this? This is not about saying, woman, know thy place, okay? And you just need to look good and zip the lip. No, I don't think so. I think women have an intelligence that is unique uh, to their own, and it would be um, a man would be wise to learn to listen to the women in his lives, whether it be especially his wife, if you're still single and young, uh, that woman would be your mom or maybe an older sister. Okay, but uh, you'll understand as we go along uh, what I'm trying to say. At the same time, we will look at this from a biblical perspective because, well, uh, one of the things that I think that this whole pandemic is doing is God is restructuring everything in society. Nothing, absolutely nothing is left untouched by this pandemic. And it's amazing how how God is working this out. But we'll get to talk about that perhaps at a future time. For now, we need to go back to the original. You know, sometimes when um, 
in life, certain things in our lives break. And because of that, we experience certain disappointments and hurts in life. And so oftentimes what God does is He brings us back to the original. And when that happens, things begin to fall into place. And that's the purpose of this ladies' hour. How did God, or what did God have in mind when He created woman? What was His idea in all of this? So, as we go along, obviously we can't do it all in one session. So, we'll, have, we'll be doing this every week. And you're welcome to join us every week. Invite your friends. Tag them even now. Okay, tag, them, tag your friends, whether they be lady friends or gentlemen friends. Tag them because there's something to learn for everyone. Okay, so let's get started. What is a lady? I want to start there. Not so much just a woman. Okay, I want to talk about a lady first. And then after that, in the next, in the succeeding sessions, we're going to take a step back. And then we're going to start and say, what is a woman? Because you have to be a woman first before you can really be a lady. Okay, and so we're going to... Uh, we're going to talk about that, but since this is ladies' hour, let me start there and then we regress, so to speak. We take a step back in the succeeding sessions and talk about a woman. Now, like gentlemen, ladies are hard to find nowadays. Okay? And there is this misconception that being a lady it means to be weak and where men will be the one to have the only say because ladies keep quiet and ladies don't speak their mind out of place and all that stuff like that. And, <clears throat> well, perhaps to a certain degree there may be some truth to that um, in terms of knowing their place, but that's part of her strength. This is not in any way to say just keep quiet and look good. Not at all. Okay? And... Um, uh, being a lady does not also mean that you will allow men to disrespect you, to abuse you, to misuse you, or to step all over you, and you just become a welcome mat. Not at all. Okay. Now, um, for sure, there will be guys that will mistreat women. Okay. Now, I don't want to call them gentlemen because gentlemen do not disrespect women. Not at all. Okay? Boys do. Boys may, boys can, and boys do. Okay? Uh, but not real men, not, not gentlemen. Gentlemen are not that way. And just because there are, there are men who are rude to women, there are men who do not know how to treat the women in their lives, this, it does not become the excuse for a woman to stop being a lady. Okay? Admittedly, it becomes a little bit more challenging, but we have to start somewhere. Okay. In fact, being a lady will show, will show you who the men are and who are still boys in your life. You know? And if you have, if you have uh, not authority, but if you have influence over them, then you can influence them to grow up from boys to men. Okay? And, and how by your decorum and by your behavior, you can actually influence men, or sorry, boys, to behave more like men. And, you know, uh, the Bible does talk about that there is a way for a woman to do this. When a woman does not know how also to treat the men in their lives, uh, men and women, unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever, they, they have a tendency to react to each other. And sometimes that chemical reaction can be a little explosive, you know. And uh, it's not to say, well, if the women just behave first, then the men will, be, will also treat them properly. Uh, it's not about finding fault and who should start. Somebody has to start. And if the men won't do it, then ladies, the ball lies in your court. Okay, I mean, I'm talking about the men in your life. Okay, and if they're watching this, good, they may learn a thing or two. But if they're not, then you as the lady of your home and your work environment or your school or wherever, wherever you may station in life you are, um, then it falls on you to behave like a lady and thus bring out the gentleman 
in the men around you. Okay? But it's going to be difficult if you live with boys. And when I say boys, I'm not talking about little boys. I'm talking about little boys in grown bodies, like boys who are 40 years old or boys who are 50 or 60 years old. They, they look like men, but they actually are more like boys. And I kind of spoke a little bit about that yesterday uh, in the Gentleman's Hour, and I will be talking more about this as we go along. And this is really, um, how do you say, one of the uh, passions of my heart, to, to develop men. And it's not an easy thing, okay? And to some degree, the ladies or the women will become more like ladies when the men become more like gentlemen. But that's for another time. So let's, um, let's just go ahead and start and, and uh, understanding that because you are a lady, okay, let's, let's talk to the single ladies first, okay, because if you're married, well, you're married. But for those of you that are single, understanding who you are and behaving like a lady should you decide that you want to become a lady, and, and I hope you do, then it will separate immediately, almost immediately, the boys from the men. Because boys don't know how to handle ladies. And right away that will tell you who you will allow to pursue you. Because you're the lady. Okay? So they will pursue you. Now, behaving like a lady will immediately um, expose those boys because they don't know how to treat you. In fact, they will to some extent, mistreat you because they don't know how to be gentlemen. And if you want a gentleman to be in your life, then you must be a lady first. And then you will see those who treat you well and those who don't treat you well. Then you can weed out the others and just say, well, you can be friends. Keep them in the friend zone. They may still be nice people, uh, nice men or nice boys, but they're not gentlemen. And so you know that if they don't treat you well while you're single, it usually gets worse when you get married. And if they treat you well while you're single, you got to find out. Are they treating you well simply because they're pursuing you, but it's not really their character, and there are ways to find out? Or are they being natural? Meaning to say they're just gentlemen. Whether, whether they're pursuing you or not, they are gentlemen. And there are ways to find out, but not in this particular session. Okay? So, let's, uh, I want to start with a passage of Scripture. And in Proverbs 18.22, this is what it says. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Understand, ladies, real men look for wives, not just women. Okay? Real men. Now, there are boys, like I said, there are boys, and all they want is a girl. Boys will never look for women. Boys will always look for girls. Boys want to play, and so they're going to look for girls who want to play. And when all you do is play, you can't build. You can't build a home. You can't build a family if all you do is play. And so being a woman, being a lady will right away help you discern, is this guy really serious or does he just want something else from you? Okay? So real men look for wives. So in other words, if you want a real man in your life, you got to be wife material. You got to be a woman. Let me go a step further. You, you have to be a lady. Ladies will attract gentlemen. Women will attract men. Girls will attract boys. It doesn't matter what your type is. It doesn't matter what you want. You will attract what you are. This is true for men. This is true for women. Okay? Or maybe I should put it this way. This is true for males. This is also true for females. In other words, if you are a man and you want a woman of distinction, then you've got to be a man of distinction as well. But if you're a boy, you'll end up with a girl. That's just how the universe works. You always attract into your life the kind of person that's like you. So, ladies, you want a gentleman? Be a lady. Okay? 
Now, real men look for wives. In other words, you got to be wife material. Okay, I just need to repeat that. Or you will not attract real men into your life. Girls will end up with boys. Women will end up with, well, with women. Okay. So what does a wife look like? Um, in Proverbs chapter 31, a lot, of, a lot of people like to quote chapter 31 of Proverbs. And let me just say something about this. A, a lot of women, you know, they, they find this too ideal. It's like, is there any woman that can live up to Proverbs 31? Um, honestly, I think not. There's just way too much there for any one woman. In fact, if you read it and you really understand it, you're going to find out that you got to look for superwoman to be able to fit the bill of Proverbs 31. So I think, th this is my, my take on it, okay? I think that Proverbs 31 presents an ideal, sorry, presents ideal women. Not just a woman where you have all those verses that are, that are fulfilled in one specific female person, okay? I don't think so. I think that uh, this, uh, Proverbs 31 really talks about women in general because then you're just going to have one kind of woman. And w what, if, what if this particular guy does not find this woman to be his type? And so you see the imbalance there, okay? At the same time, I don't want to put too much pressure on women by saying you got to be like this for you to be the perfect woman. And then there, there doesn't seem to be much, seem to be much on men. Like, uh, you know, like maybe a, a, a whole chapter just on men. Like the Proverbs 30 man or, so, or Proverbs 32 man. Of course, it's only until 31. But maybe develop a chapter just to really put pressure on the men. So ladies, I just want to focus on three verses here. Okay, and the others, uh, you, you find yourself that you wake up early and you prepare food for your, for your family and even the servants and all that stuff. Great if you are a morning person, but maybe some of you are not like that. Okay, maybe you're the type you buy a piece of property and you cause it to prosper, and that's you. Okay, and there is a verse there that's something like that, and that's great. That makes you also part of a Proverbs 31 woman. Okay, so. Having said that, let me read um, verses 10 to 12, and that's all we're going to look at for now. And this is what it says. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. Okay. So here's the thing. I realize this is talking about a wife. I think, I think that, I'm not saying that, that married women are better than single women and all that stuff like that. Not at all, okay? What I am saying, however, is that we need to understand that I believe God's call is for the man and the woman eventually to be married. After all, in Genesis, he said, go forth and multiply and fill the earth. Okay. That doesn't make single men and single women, especially those who are called to be single all their lives, that they are less of a man or less of a woman if they're not married. Okay? No, not at all. I'm just saying that the uh, default of God is that we end up getting married. Okay? That's all I want to say about that. And no, no, I don't mean anything negative to those of you that have chosen to remain single, okay, whether you are a man or a woman. So it does talk about being a virtuous wife. Now here's the thing, to become a virtuous wife, to become a wife, uh, a wife of strength, a wife of who is respectable, you have to start being a girl first, right? Everybody is born either a boy or a girl. And in this case, we're talking about women, so you have to start out as a girl. And you are molded as a girl. And we're going to be talking about this in succeeding sessions, not at this time. But the molding takes place while you're still a girl. And 
all of the ingredients needed to become that virtuous wife begins while you're a little girl. And so here's the thing, and I, I just want to speak a word of encouragement to, uh, to all of you ladies because I realize that life now, growing up now, people are so busy. And I don't want to say anything really about uh, to, to destroy your fathers or anything like that, but let's face it. There are no perfect fathers. I am not a perfect father in any stretch of the imagination. There is so much I need to learn even about fathering, even to this day. Okay? I've learned quite a few things uh, growing up and uh, through experience, both painful and joyful experiences. But I've come to realize that everything, that's why we're born single and that's why we're born immature so that our parents now can speak life and bring in all of these ingredients that will prepare us for life. But see, if our parents are more focused on work, especially if they have to be far away because, you know, OFWs, overseas Filipino workers, and all of that stuff like that, well, they keep the fathers away, and, and, or mothers. And what happens is the child now has to grow up on her own. And that puts a lot of pressure because then a child doesn't know life. How do I know how to behave? What's the right way to behave with other girls? And how do I behave with other boys? And it becomes really a challenge. And so we learn from different sources. We learn from friends who are also immature. We learn from movies. We learn from so many sources, but not from our parents. And the Bible says that one of the major roles of parents is to raise up godly children. And part of being godly is not just prayerful. It's not just about knowing the Bible. But part of being godly is being, in this case, a woman. What does it mean to be a woman? What does it mean to be a woman of strength, a woman of character? See, a woman does not mean that you're weak. You can be a woman of strength. And that's what the fullness of being a woman is someone who is strong uh, internally, emotionally, mentally. Okay? Woman does not have to mean weak. Woman doesn't have to mean that this is an object of abuse, an object of man's lusts. Not at all. You can be a strong woman. But see, these things are, are taught by our fathers. And they are passed on to... Uh, the young boys and the young girls. Let me just say this, okay? Uh, I'll, I'll talk more about this when I talk about parenting, but I just need to say this right now. Strength is passed on by men to their children, both boys and girls, okay? Uh, it's God's design. So a man, a man can pass on strength to a young girl, and she will develop godly strength. Now, please don't take, get me wrong here. When a woman tries to pass her strength, and she could have gotten her strength from her dad, but maybe now she is a single mom, or maybe the husband passed away while the girls are still young, or the boys. And so now it's up to the mom to be able to pass that on to her kids. And let me say something, single moms. You know, I have the highest respect for you. It is not easy being a single mom, a single parent, even for, for the gentlemen out there. But when a woman tries to teach her young girl's strength, it usually gets perverted somewhere along the way, and it becomes uh, somehow not strength, but it becomes um, violence. Uh, not violence, it becomes manipulative. It becomes controlling, see? And it's just, it's just that I believe that God intended for men to be able to pass that on to young boys and young girls. Now, what happens if you're a single mom? Well, it's good to have uh, men around you, not necessarily someone you will marry, but a man could be a brother, could be a dad, could be an uncle, could be a best friend, but someone who can pass that on to your children. You cannot do it on your own. Just like, just like a man cannot pass on certain qualities to his kids that are supposed to be passed on by a mom. 
Okay, and that's why we need both. Okay, and that's why maybe I should just say it here. Uh, I struggle with the idea of same-sex uh, marriage simply because either both are men or both are women, and that's not balanced. It just isn't. You need a man and you need a woman the way God intended it to be. Now, that's all I'll say about that. I just want to move on, okay? So, um, the Bible says that her worth is far above rubies. Now, some of you probably would have said, are thinking, why not diamonds? Diamonds are more expensive. Why not rubies? Well, understand that one of the things that adds value to anything is this factor called rarity. The more rare something is, the greater its value. And believe it or not, rubies are more rare than diamonds. It's just that at some point, some people decided that they would, they would place more value on diamonds than on rubies. But God intended it to be rubies instead of diamonds. And there's a whole teaching on that, which I can't get into right now. But the Bible says that because rubies are, were, are actually more rare than diamonds, in God's, in God's eyes, rubies have greater value. And the Bible says that a virtuous wife is worth far above rubies. Not just one ruby, above many rubies. Okay, so, uh, and then a wife also protects her husband. The Bible says that the heart of her husband safely trusts her so he will have no lack of gain. A wife protects her husband and so he feels safe with her. My question is this, for those of you that are married, does your husband trust you? Does your husband feel safe? You know, his secrets, his thoughts, his fears. You know, ladies, um, their men have egos. And it's so important for men to look strong in your eyes. And that's a good thing. Okay? It's a good thing. That means he values you. And he wants to look strong in your eyes. But the thing is, do you allow him also to be real? Or does he have to fake it all along, all, all the time rather? Does he have to fake being strong? Does he have to fake knowing it all the time? And if that's the case, there will be added pressure on him. And that means he will have a harder time trusting you because if you see his weakness... You might not love him anymore. See? So you, ladies, you need to create an environment that is safe for men to be real. Not just men to be strong, not just men to be real, but men to feel safe. That way, if they feel tired, if they feel afraid, they can share it with you. They trust you that you will not use this against them. You will not talk to your girlfriends about, about, oh, my husband is so weak. He's afraid of this. He's afraid of that. He needs to trust you. That the things that are meant for you alone will stay simply between you and him. His heart trusts her. Okay? And... Um, uh, and the Bible says that she is committed to his good all the days of her life. Now, maybe your husband does not treat you well, and it's hard for you to trust him as well. And so you're waiting for him to grow up. You're waiting for him to be a gentleman. You're waiting for him to, to treat you well, basically. The problem is this. He may also be reacting to you. Because maybe you're not treating him well. And so now it becomes, which came first, the chicken or the egg situation. Okay? And yes, admittedly, you know what? The men should start. They are the covenant initiators. They need to start treating you well first. But what if he doesn't know that? What if you, for example, married a boy, and now you want to grow up, and you want to be a woman, but you're stuck with a boy? And it's going to be hard. Yes, it's going to be hard. But it's not impossible. And the key here, ladies, be a woman. Treat him well. Because remember this, whatsoever you sow into him, you will also reap. So when you sow respect, eventually, 
maybe not right away, He will start to respect you back. When you sow goodness, he will also, you will also begin to reap goodness. That's why the Bible says, do not return evil for evil. So if he disrespects you, and because of that you disrespect him back, and even in greater measure, all you're doing is destroying your marriage. And you are both working and contributing to the destruction of your marriage. Someone has to break that cycle. And because this is ladies hour, well, let it begin with you. And you start respecting him. Whatever you want him to do to you, you also do to him. And start it, start it. And you won't see results right away. But if you don't quit, the Bible says, do not grow weary in doing good. And in due season, you will reap a, har a harvest, okay? So ladies, yes, it is, it's better if the men start, but if he doesn't, then maybe you should, okay? So in our remaining time, I want to be able to share with you 17 qualities of a lady, okay? And a Christian lady, by the way. And this is not in any um, order of importance. Uh, this is just random. Well, maybe the, num the first, the first uh, uh, three or four are in, in, in proper order, but uh, the rest will just be random, okay? And I'm just going to start, and uh, like I said, if you've got some comments, write them down here, okay? If uh, you have questions, write them down as well. Disagreements, I'm happy to listen to your disagreements as well. Just write them down, and I will respond to it as soon as I can, okay? So, 17 qualities of a Christian lady. Let's start. Number one, she is prayerful. In other words, she has a relationship with God. And that, dear ladies, is your key to change, especially if you're married. It's the key to begin to bring change into your relationship with your husband. It doesn't matter how, how wonderful or how horrible your marriage is right now. And maybe right now, if you are in a bad marriage, let me just speak to you like this. Maybe you're in a bad marriage right now. I want you to understand that, that there is always hope. Okay? Here's a very quick uh, testimony. My wife and I, uh, some of you know this. My wife and I, when we first got married back in the early 90s, our marriage was horrible. Oh my gosh, it was horrible. It was Worse than horrible, it was hell on earth. I mean, we were always fighting. We were always arguing. Um, maybe not every day, but for 10 years, for 10 years, it was really, really hell. One of the things, one of the things that we agreed on um, just when we got married is that when we have kids, we're not going to fight in front of them. And that was a very, very important rule for me because my parents fought all the time. My dad was a very violent man, and he just beat up my mom, you know? And that's what I saw day in and day out. And I remember the fear I felt every time I would hear a raised voice, I would hear things crashing in the home, and all that stuff like that. And so I, I asked my wife, my bride at that time, can we agree never to fight in front of the kids? Now, I already said that we were always fighting. We were always arguing, but not in front of the kids. And so sometimes what we would do is um, we'd wait for the kids to go to bed, and then we'd go into our car or van. We had a van at that time. We'd go into the van, start the car, turn on the air con, and um, fight inside. You know, And then we would shout at each other and everything and when we were done we go back to bed and we go to sleep and our kids our kids do not remember seeing us fighting because it was something that we wanted to shield them from because i know what it's like to grow up in a battle zone my home was a battle zone but here's the thing about two weeks i think about two weeks before our 10th anniversary my wife and i it's a long story but I'll just cut to the chase, and maybe someday I'll give you the story. We got a breakthrough. And 
literally without exaggeration, we just had our biggest fight. I mean, we had 10 years practice. This was two weeks before our 10th anniversary. So we had almost 10 years of practice of fighting. This was our worst fight. Now, we were not violent in the sense that we would punch each other and stuff like that. No, I, 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 it was something I didn't want to do. My wife also never really hit me, okay? Um, but the shouts and everything, uh, the name calling and all that stuff like that. And then this one particular night, I remember we had a really um, violently emotional fight, okay? It's emotionally violent, not, not physically. And, and then that evening, God really, we were in bed, or she was in bed, I was on my computer preparing for my message on Sunday, and the Lord really dealt with me. It didn't take very long, maybe about 20 minutes. Uh, the Lord dealt with me, and then I spoke to my wife, and we apologized to each other. We, we buried 10 years of hurt, and then she went to bed. I continued working on my message. I went to bed uh, after that, but here's the thing. When we woke up, we were so in love with each other. I mean, night and day, night and day. Now, I know that marriages don't work, uh, don't fix that quickly. God did a miracle in our lives. But my point in sharing that is this. If God can do it in a marriage that has been sour for 10 years, within 10 years of being married, then God can fix your marriage. I really believe that. And maybe some of you, the idea of... The idea of um, falling in love with this monster that you sleep with right now is the farthest thing from your mind. It was in my mind. But when God fixes something, it comes out better than before it was broken. So I just want to share that with you because there is hope. But you see, there came a point in my wife's mind where she said, you know what, Lord, she was in prayer. She said, Lord, I give up. I give up trying to change Joseph. You do it or that's it because I want to give up on this. See? And the moment God brought her to that point, he started to work in my life. And as he started to work in my life, even my wife started to change. That's the wonderful thing. See, I was having my own struggles with her. It's like I married a witch. But then God started to change my mind about her, and I started to see the beautiful things about her, and I, started, I just fell in love with her all over again. I mean, let's face it, you married him. There's something nice about him. You just got to wake that up again, okay? So prayer. Uh, be a woman of prayer. This is probably a lady's most important quality. Be a woman of prayer. Number two. She, and it goes together with this, with number one, she's a woman of the word. Okay? She is guided by the word of God. The word of God is her compass. See, one of the reasons why people break down is because we try and, and live lives our own way. I mean, our, our song is my way, you know? And then you're going to have a lot of regrets. The Bible, Jesus showed us the way. There is one way to live life. And he said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. God wants through Jesus Christ to give you an abundant, fulfilled, satisfying life. That is his desire. And so we need the word together with prayer to be our guide. And we will find that there are many things in our lives that are broken and God wants to fix it. And sometimes when you're broken, you get so used to broken that that's all you know. And you think that that's the way it should be. But it's not. God has something better. But because sometimes that something better is so foreign, it's so alien, it's so different from what you're used to, we always go back to what we know. And so we go back to brokenness when he came to make us whole. So we got a, 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 a real lady is a woman of the word. Number three, she is a worshiper. In other words, she is intimate with God. 
It's not enough to pray. Many people pray. Buddhists pray. Catholics pray. Muslims pray. Christians pray. So many people are praying. Okay, and, and here's the thing. The question is, who are you praying to? And even more importantly, is the one you're praying to listening to you? Because the proof of your God listening to you is your life changing, not to the way you want it, but, but to the way He wants it. Because His ways and His thoughts are higher and greater than our ways and our thoughts. We can only know so much. God is perfect in His knowledge. And He wants to bring us to that place of ever-increasing perfection. Amen? Okay. So she is a worshiper. In other words, she's intimate with God. And number four, she is a godly influence. Uh, this is very important. Okay? Ladies, you are called to your greatest strength is influence. The greatest strength of a man is his words. The greatest strength of a woman is her influence. And let's face it, that to me is a greater strength. Why? Because a man needs to speak to express his power and to express his authority. A woman simply needs to look with her eyes and everybody gets it. You know, my mom used to say, makuha ka sa isang tingin. Okay? And guys, <laughs> we can't do that. Women can. They have this look on their face that says, go upstairs right now, you're not having dinner. Or you're grounded. She doesn't have to say anything. You just see it in her face. Why? It's because she's a woman. It's, it's her language. It's her strength. It's something God gave her. Now, here's the thing. You want to be a godly influence to your husband so that he becomes a better version of himself. Yes, that is to a large extent on your shoulder, ladies. To a large extent. And so, for you to be a godly influence, you've got to be a godly woman first. And that's why it's so important for you to be godly first before you are married. Because marriage will put so much pressure on you that if you're not godly, becoming godly while you're married is going to be an extra challenge. Not impossible, but an extra challenge. So you want to be able to be that godly single woman first so that by the time you get married, your being godly will also attract a godly man into your life and becoming a godly influence on a godly man becomes so much easier and your marriage will flow so much smoother. But, just a word of encouragement to you ladies who probably are not a godly influence to your husband, but now, having heard this, you want that. That's okay. Grow in your godliness. Spend time in the Word, spend time in prayer, spend time in worship. And you will discover that as you grow, your influence over your husband will change him. But you got to change first. Okay, enough about that. Let's move on. Number, what am I? Number five, she is gracious. She is gracious. She has a kind word for people. Her words, she doesn't have a mean spirit. See, words are just a reflection of the abundance of the heart. The Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I think it's Matthew 12, 34, but I might be wrong about that. But in any event, the Bible does say that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so when a heart is wicked, well, guess what? The person will be a mean person, and so you will find that there are a lot of mean words coming out instead of gracious words. And yet the Bible says, let your words be full of grace and seasoned with salt, that you may know how to answer everyone. Graciousness is a virtue, and a lady is gracious. She's not mean with her words. She doesn't have a mean spirit. She doesn't want to destroy anyone with her looks or with her words. She can put them in their place, but there is a gentleness to her. A, 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 a lady is like a female gentleman, if I could put it that way. Okay? There, a lady is a gentle person. Number six, a lady is also a leader. 
Why? Because leadership is influence. And if you have influence, you are leading. Maybe not the same way as men when they use their words, but you can lead with your influence. Okay? So she knows she has influence and she uses that to lead people to do what is good and righteous. Use your influence, ladies. Okay? She's a good leader. Number seven, she is honorable. I like this. She is steadfast. She is um, consistent. And she keeps her commitments and her word. She doesn't break promises. When she makes a commitment, she keeps it. That's the lady. She is consistent. Her yes is yes, her no is no. And she does what is right even when no one else is looking. That's what it means to be honorable. Number eight, she is forthright. She says what she means and she means what she says. She doesn't play with her words. She doesn't leave room for interpretation. See, a lot of people, a lot of ladies, a lot of women think that they like to speak cryptically and if their husband loves her, they should understand. But it only leaves for so much interpretation. And let's face it, ladies, men are not mind readers. In fact, most men, in, in communication, there's such a thing as high context communication and low context communication. When in low context communication, you need more words. And words become very important. Words will define what exactly you mean. That's low context. High context is you say certain things, you only say so much, but you understand so much more. Okay? In other words, it's like nagkakaintindihan. And women to women, most women, they speak in high context. They say something, they understand what each other means. But men are more low context. And so words become important because it's the only way we will be able to understand what the other person is saying. Now, when you have a high context woman and a low context man speaking, and she says something, but she speaks this way, but his understanding is here, okay, not less, but low context, then he will take what she says literally. And so if, if he says, uh, how are you? And she says, fine. Okay? Now obviously, her fine is not fine because of how she said fine. And so her fine is, I'm pissed off at you, I'm angry at you. But because he heard the word fine and he doesn't want to fight his wife, he'll take it at that and say, okay, good. And that gets her more upset. Because he didn't get it, see? But most men are not mind readers. So ladies, say what you mean and mean what you say. That's how a lady is, okay? A lady makes sure that when she speaks, she is understood. Whether she's talking to another woman and she can speak high context, or she's talking to a man and she can speak low context as well, okay? She's forthright. Number nine, she is thoughtful. She thinks of others and not just of herself. A lady is concerned about the people around her. She's not a senorita. You know, it's like everything is about me. No, a real lady puts others ahead of her. Number 10, she represents herself with class. And, listen to me. Uh, listen to this one. She represents herself with class and dignity on social media. She's not crass. She's not cheap. She doesn't post anything that is embarrassing, whether to herself, her husband, her family, or her friends. In other words, she understands her worth, and she doesn't cheapen herself by posting things that will demean her or lessen people's opinion of her. She has decorum. See, um, I, I will, <laughs> I know I'm probably going to get into trouble if I say this, but you know what, I'm going to just say it anyway. Because of quarantine, a lot of people are bored. I mean, they are bored as a stone. And and so they look for things to just 
give them some kind of entertainment. And right now, the number one most downloaded app is TikTok, right? And so you've got, you've got all of these men and women, or maybe I should say boys and girls, that are lip syncing all of these things. And, and the problem is most of these things are not even uplifting. They're not encouraging, okay? Some of them are funny. I, I'll admit, yes, some of them are funny. But the problem is it cheapens the person. You know, and you might say, well, that's just your opinion. And yeah, you're right. It is my opinion. Okay? But I don't think you're going to find women of distinction TikToking. See, it, it's, just, it's, it's just not done by ladies. Okay? And if, if it's something you enjoy, well, God bless you. I'm not here to judge you. But the point is that a lady, and I'm talking about ladies, ladies do not cheapen themselves uh, or, or, you know, represents herself rather with class and dignity on social media. Okay, that's, that's really what I want to say about that. And we'll just move on. I'm probably going to get a lot of comments on that. And so, but that's okay. Uh, we're all entitled to our own opinions. Let's just be agreeable uh, in our disagreements. Okay. Number 11, she is hospitable okay she's hospitable she's gr a gracious hostess who ensures that her guests are comfortable and that just goes with being thoughtful she thinks of the people around her okay <clears throat> number 12 she is temperate she's not loud or obnoxious she does not behave poorly especially when imbibing alcohol i'm not against drinking alcohol but you have to know your limit so that you can still behave with dignity. You're not throwing yourself all over the place, behaving like something that you would regret the next day when you have your hangover. Okay? She knows how much to drink. She is temperate. Number 13, she draws boundaries. Okay? She draws boundaries. What do I mean by that? She knows how far to go in social circles. She will behave this way, and she can even joke around, but she also chooses her jokes because she's not crass. She's not cheap, okay? So she doesn't make jokes at the expense of someone else. Her jokes are tasteful. And uh, she also lets other people know how far she will allow them to go with her. She sets boundaries. Okay, we can be friends, but if you're married, you've got a husband, yes, you can have male friends, but they can only come this way with you because there are certain things that you will not allow simply because you are married. And the same is true for single ladies. Okay? Uh, you can play around. When I say play around, I don't mean sexually or anything, but, but you can have fun with your male friends and everything. But you also know, because you are a lady, that there are certain things you will not do. Certain things you will not allow them to, or certain ways that you will not allow them to treat you. Okay? Because it's not right. They should not treat you this way. They are not supposed to abuse you, make fun of you, treat you like one of the guys, because you are not one of the guys. You are a lady. Okay? Um, where am I? Number 14, she is not petty. Okay? She knows when to let things go. She doesn't fight over the little things. She doesn't get upset over the little things. You know, she, she realizes that losing her cool is not cool. It doesn't mean that she cannot be passionate, that everything has to be stifled. No, that's, that's, that's um, neurotic. Okay? You don't want to be, uh, you, you, you don't want to become neurotic. Okay? It's a form of neurosis. No, but she knows, how to, she knows how to express herself without being, without losing her cool. You know, without being, how do you call it? Picon. Okay? Because, well, as we say, talo ang picon. So you don't give your power away. Number 15, we're almost done. Okay? She is humble. She allows others to shine 
and have their moment. She's not insecure that if somebody receives a prize, she will rejoice with that person and not complain and say, how come she has that and I don't? Okay, that's, that's a sign of immaturity. We just need to grow up. That's all. Once we grow up, we will be that way. Okay? So she's humble and she doesn't have a crab mentality where the only way you can shine is by pulling people down. No, in fact, she helps people shine as well. And that's what adds to her value. That's what adds to her charm. And if I might say so, that's what adds to her beauty. She likes to see people shine. Number 16, she takes pride in her appearance at all times. Okay? She's modest in the way she dresses. She's not ostentatious but she knows how to dress, well, tastefully. And, and uh, her clothes are never too revealing. She's not a prude, but it's not too revealing, where you don't leave too much to the imagination. Being overly underdressed, or where, you're, where your dress is probably two sizes smaller than your body and, and things are popping out of your dress is actually not sexy. In fact, ladies, let me tell you a little secret about men. Okay. Men by nature are builders. We like to build. We like to build homes. We like to build houses and, 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 and buildings. We like to build roads. That's why most civil engineers are men. You know, mo most carpenters are men because we like to build. We like to build things. Uh, we like to build families. We we like to build. We like to build societies. We like to build empires. And to be able to build, you need tools. So men see things as tools. I've got my iPad with me right now. To me, it's a tool to be able to get things done. And I will use it. Now, here's the thing. Ladies, when you underdress, when, you are, when your clothes are too revealing, and you become way too... Um, uh, what do I say? Anyway, your clothes are too revealing. Then you begin in the eyes of most men who are actually boys, looking like men, you become a tool. You become an object. You objectify yourself by dressing inappropriately. And so these are the ones that will use you. That's why, for example, uh, women of the night if you know what I mean, you have to dress in a very sexy and revealing way because basically she is advertising her profession and basically saying, use me for a fee, but use me. Okay? Now, because men are builders, when they see tools, they will use the tool. And when you dress that way, you become an object that men will use. And when, see, women are not meant to be used. They are meant to be cherished. They are meant to be loved. They are meant to be shown uh, affection, they, and so on and so forth, but not to be used simply as a sex object. And when you dress that way, now I'm not saying that it's an excuse for men to treat you that way. No, I'm just giving you the psyche of a man, okay? And a, a real man will still respect you regardless of how you choose to dress. But how many real men do you really know? Let's face it. Most men are not men. They look like men, but they're really boys in men's clothing. And they will use you. So, but if that's your thing, then fine. Then that's your thing. And you want to be used. You want the attention. But see, ladies don't need that attention because they're securing themselves. They know their worth. They don't need men looking at them and paying them compliments and, and whistling at them and you know uh, clicking the like because you put all these sexy pictures of yourself on, on social media and now you've got these thousand likes, two thousand likes and, and it seems to add to your worth and value. Actually, it doesn't. Your worth and value must not be in how many people like your images. Your worth and value must be rooted in Christ He's the one that gives you value, and that value is there regardless of whether people pay attention to it or not. You are secure in that. Let me quickly bring this to a close. Number 17, she is a peacemaker, and this is a godly 
virtue. This is the last thing I want to talk about. She doesn't stir up intrigue or drama. She doesn't contribute to strife, discord, or division. She is not a gossip. Ladies know when to zip the lip. Ladies, gentlemen, the same thing. We spoke about that yesterday. Okay? But we don't, we don't sow discord and strife. We don't create drama. There's enough drama going around. Okay? So our time is up. And um, that's basically all we have for now for this first uh, online ladies hour. And I hope you learned a, a couple of things. I know some of you, maybe uh, you agreed with some of the things I said. Maybe you didn't agree with some of the things I said. And uh, I'm willing to listen. Okay, write down your comments and I'll be happy to respond to them um, as soon as I can. And um, I plan to do this every week. Now, we're not going to be talking about ladies only. We're going to be talking about women, uh, the psyche, and many other things. And um, there will always be something for whatever station in life you're in right now. Single, married, single again, single mom, you know, uh, uh, grandmother. There will always be something here for you. And I hope that you, uh, you have a little takeaway from this episode that we have together. I really enjoyed uh, spending this time with you. Thank you for welcoming me into your home. And I hope that we see each other again next uh, Wednesday, okay, 4 o'clock. And until then, I pray that you have a blessed day and enjoy this time with your family. God bless you. Bye for now.